This video describes the H89 CF RTC Serial Parallel Board, a modern add-on board for the Heathkit H89 computer that adds support for flash storage, a real-time clock, and serial and parallel ports. I'll cover the hardware features, software support, demonstrated operating, and describe the board that I built up. The H89 CF RTC Serial Parallel Board for the Heathkit H89 computer is a custom expansion board that adds several useful features. It provides a compact flash or CF card interface, a real-time clock or RTC, and both parallel and serial ports. The CF card interface replaces the original floppy disk drive with a compact flash card, offering significantly more storage capacity. It can emulate multiple floppy drives, making it easier to load and store software. It emulates up to seven disk partitions with multiple logical drives per partition, eight under HDOS and five under CPM. HDOS drives can be up to 16 megabytes in size and CPM drives up to eight megabytes. The OS drivers also support up to three real floppy drives connected to an H17 or H38 disk controller. A boot ROM is added, which is able to select an image and boot the computer from a CF flash partition. The real-time clock circuit provides an accurate battery back source of the current time and date and utility programs are provided to read and write the clock and set the date and time at the operating system level for file timestamps and use by applications. It provides two serial ports that are compatible with the Heathkit serial I.O. board. It also adds a parallel port typically used for connecting to older printers that use a parallel interface, sometimes called a Centronics printer port, or other devices like a paper tape reader or punch. The hardware was designed by Noberto Collado. The boot ROM was written by Joe Travis, and the HDOS and CPM drivers were written by Rick Davis. Additional software included in the provided OS images were written or built by members of the Society of 8-Bit Heathkit Computerists, including Daryl Pellin, Joe Travis, and Glenn Roberts. The board goes into a right side expansion slot of the H89 CPU card. The two serial ports use 16550 UARTs, the same as the Heath serial I.O. board. It provides a DTE serial port at I.O. port 330 octal and a DCE port at 340 octal. If you have a serial I.O. board, you should remove it and attach two of the serial port cables to the CF flash card. These are usually routed to 25 pin DB25F and DB25M connectors on the back of the computer. The parallel printer port uses an 8255 programmable peripheral interface chip at IO port 320 octal. The parallel port can be wired to a 25 pin DB25F connector on the back of the computer, which should support a standard IBM PC style parallel printer cable. Another 8255 is used for the CF flash and real-time clock. Compact flash uses a CF to IDE adapter. A standard CF module, typically 256 megabytes in size, is inserted into it. The real-time clock uses an Epson 72421 chip and is backed up by a CR1220 coin battery. There are some jumpers on the board to configure the serial and parallel ports and to enable power for the real-time clock and CF flash. Three LEDs indicate the presence of plus 5, plus 12, and minus 12 volt power. The Heath monitor ROM is not able to boot from the CF flash card. An additional boot ROM for this purpose is installed in a normally unused ROM socket of the CPU card. If you want to build a board of your own, everything needed to do so is at the link listed in the YouTube video description. Gerber files are available which may be sent directly to a PCB fabricator, or blank PCBs may be available from Todd Goodman at the same link. In my case, Joe Travis sent me a bare board which I built up. Most of the required parts are available from sources like Mouser or DigiKey. Some older parts are obsolete and may need to be obtained from other sources like eBay. See the notes in the documentation on suitable CF IDE adapters. I used the type that required some rework to remove the external power connector 
and move the three LEDs to the other side of the board. I also found that on my adapter, pin 20 of the IDE connector was missing in order to ensure correct keying, but this pin is needed for power, so I added a jumper from VCC to the power pin on the CF adapter. For the boot ROM, you'll need an EEPROM programmer or someone who can program it for you. This can be a 2716 or 2732 EEPROM or equivalent EEPROM. A jumper wire also needs to be added, as well as setting the jumpers on the CPU board that determine whether you're using a Texas Instruments TMS2716 or non-TMS2716. They differ in the power supply voltages used. Both the existing ROM at position U518 and the added ROM at U519 should be of the same type. The 25-pin Molex connectors Heathkit used for expansion cards are no longer available. You can use two 10-pin and one 5-pin instead. The image needs to be written to the CF Flash module as described in the documentation. Note that this module is different from the more modern SD and micro SD flash cards. You'll need a computer or laptop that has a CF socket or a suitable USB adapter. In my case, I had a suitable USB all-in-one external card reader writer that worked. Once the image is written using the HDD RAW copy tool, you can insert the CF flash module into the board. With the card assembled and installed in a rightmost slot, a CF module installed with the software images, and the boot ROM installed, you're ready to use the board. Let's see how the board works. Power on the H89 computer and at the H prompt enter go 20,000 and press return. The H89 will display boot of logical drive 0 to 6. Select 0 through 6 or press return to select the default of 0. The H89 will then attempt to boot the selected logical drive on the CF flash board. The logical drives for the H89 CF distribution image are the following. 0 H.3.02, 1 H.2.0, 2 CPM 2.2.04 drive A, 3 CPM drive B, 4 CPM drive C, 5 CPM drive D, and 6 CPM drive E. Let's look first at H.3.0, option 0 or the default if you press return. HDOS was Heathkit's proprietary operating system for the H8 and H89 computers. I'll cover it in more detail in an upcoming video. 3.02 was the last version released. Note that the HDOS image prompts to set the date and time on startup. When you press enter, it gets this from the real-time clock on the CF flash board. Initially, you need to set the date and time using the provided H89 RTC clock program. Once set, it will be maintained by the battery even when the computer is powered off. The standard CF Flash HDOS image provides eight disk drives, each 16 megabytes in size, named SY0 through SY7. A huge collection of software is provided in the image, including language compilers and interpreters, games, utilities, and software development tools. If you have an H17 or H38 disk controller and real floppy drives, they will appear as drives DK0, DK1, and DK2. The two drives on my system can be accessed after they're mounted.
As mentioned, I'll discuss HDOS in more detail in a future video. Let's move on and try CPM. First we should shut down HDOS cleanly using the by command. Now we can use shift reset to get back to the monitor and run the boot program, this time selecting image 2. CPM was an industry standard for 8080 and Z80 based computers and ran on many different machines. Heathkit offered it as an option for the H89. I'll have more to say about it in a future video. As on HDOS, the real time clock is read on startup to set the system date and time. The CF flashcard emulates five floppy drives named A through E, each 8 megabytes in size. Any real floppy drives show up as F, G, and H. In my case, the two internal drives are available. The final option available is to boot into the older HDOS version 2. We can boot it as option 1. HDOS 2 is much smaller and simpler than version 3, but can sometimes be useful as there are some applications that only ran under HDOS 2. There were some other operating system choices available for the H89 other than HDOS and CPM2. This included NPM, CPM3 or CPM Enhanced, and UCSD Pascal. CF flash images for these are not currently available, but at some point they may be. The CF flash board has greatly improved the usefulness of my H89 as it allows me to have multiple large disk drives that can boot different operating systems and store many more files than possible with floppy disks. It also allowed me to initially bootstrap my system and make bootable floppy disks. When you consider that the original floppy drives on the Heathkit H89 only had a capacity of 100 kilobytes, the eight 16 megabyte drives available under HDOS are equivalent to over a thousand floppy disks. The real-time clock is helpful to add correct date and timestamps on files. The serial ports allow me to remove the existing serial I.O. board and replace it with the CF flash and supports a parallel interface to a printer or other parallel port device. I often use the serial ports to transfer files between the H89 and a desktop computer. In the next video I'll talk about another modern add-on board for the H89 which complements this one, the VDIP1 USB RTC board.